Hi everybody. So, these things, they were actually invented in about the 1850s by George Cayley for his um, glider. And it was in 1946 when an American doctor working in A&E decided to push for them in cars and they started putting them in cars. Everybody hated them and they would be cutting them out with scissors. It wasn't until the 1970s when the first actual law was passed and that was in Australia and of course it was quickly followed up all around the world. Now, you've got to ask yourself, why on earth are we talking about seatbelts? Well, it's actually because of this, the mechanism of them. The first seatbelt mechanisms were just, you tied them around yourself, okay? But that was um, pretty lacking in freedom of movement and what people wanted was the seatbelt to move as they moved. Now the first mechanism was pretty simple actually and very reminiscent of the um, centrifugal clutch that was used in railways all of the time. It was a roller resting on the webbing and as you pulled the webbing up slowly the roller could roll. If you snatched it up though, the roller went up into a cinch plate, a bit like a jam cleat, and caught the webbing and held the webbing. And that was very popular for a long time. Now what we're using is a ratchet and pawl mechanism. And if you remember in video 1853, we talked about the ratchet and pawl. What they do these days is they have a pendulum for the pawl. And as the car suddenly breaks, the pendulum swings, the pawl comes into operation and locks a ratchet that prevents the seatbelt from undoing. And that's the mechanism of seatbelts these days. Now, in video 1853, we looked at the ratchet and pole for a flywheel. And if you like, we can take a step back in history because that centrifugal clutch, that idea of a roller snapping tight on something, is in fact the basis of one-way bearings. Okay, this is the basis of the one-way bearing or the clutch bearing. And when you think it's a centrifugal clutch at heart, it's no surprise it's called that. But it is just an ordinary ring like that and then a centre section with this star shape. And if we put the star shape in the centre section, what you should notice is that right there, this gets nearer to the ring. So this one is at its broadest and it gets nearer as it goes into there. So if I drop a bearing in there, which is just a rod of steel, then if I turn this in that direction, then the bearing is forced into this little cup where it's got the most space and so it will spin freely in that direction. If I then start to turn it in that direction you can see that the steel rod is now progressing up into this narrower space until it jams. When it jams, just like a seatbelt, then it can't turn anymore or if you like in that direction this can turn independently of this. When it goes in that direction the whole lot needs to turn and that is how a one-way or clutch bearing works. So how do we make one? Well, this bit's easy obviously, it's just a ring, a, it, an even ring, it's a bit of tube, so that's really easy to do. This bit's pretty easy, it's just a bar. Actually these are stainless steel pegs that you get for holding up shelves and it's 25mm by 6mm, you can buy those or you can obviously just print them if you like. Those are the two easy bits, it's this star bit that's the kind of awkward bit. So let's have a look, see how we print that up. Okay, so to start that, what we need is a cylinder. We drag a cylinder on, size it to what we want. And I've just chosen these because that's the size of my pins. My pins are 25 high and they're 6 millimeters in diameter. What we need now is a hole to drop the pin in. Now, Tinkercad is not that accurate, so you need to leave a bit of leeway or everything will jam up. So I'm doing mine 6.5 for a 6mm pin. Now we've got our two bits, we need to line them up. And line them up to this cylinder here. There we go, and that is right on the edge of the cylinder. There it is. Now we need to make that funky little angle bit and we do that with a cube. And again we can line those up. But this time line it up to that cylinder there.
and we join those two together. And there we go, we get a cutout. Now we want to repeat that cutout all the way around at 60 degree increments. And rotate it 60 degrees. When you've done that, you get that. Highlight the whole lot and group them. And there you go, you get your funky design. Of course, what we want is a hole in the centre. Because we need to put the bar through there. Let's make that an 8mm hole. Centre it. Do that. And then group it. There you go. <laughs> so there it is. Put together with our ring. And of course we've got our one way bearing. Now we want to do something with it. So I've put a cog around it. So all I've done is put some cog teeth around that to get me that. It's exactly the same thing. And that bit is going to be carrying the bearings. And it will go over this. Now this has one slight problem with it actually. If I put it together and pop one of these in then that has a propensity to turn it, it goes that way and you want to stop it doing that. Now in commercial versions of this what they do is they put little springs down the middle to press it straight. Of course we don't really want to be doing springs so all you really do is just add another little bit on the end there. So if we look at the two together you'll see that they're identical only instead of having the cup and then a flat bit it's got a cup and another cup made in exactly the same way with that tilt to it so that it will rise up because it doesn't need that much. I mean that's only got like a, a millimetre or so tilt so the bearing will travel a millimetre. So the distance between here and here is three millimetres. That's all you need. Once you do that you have something which works really quite beautifully. So I've got my cog now on my drive piece and I've attached my actual star to the generator wheel there. The steels will go in there, that will go in there and then I'll be able to drive this in one way when I stop driving it that will continue to spin. Now clutch bearings are pretty neat. You've got to, you've got to see that. That is much neater than the uh, ratchet and pawl that we did. They do have a habit of jumping actually. They're quite, um, they tend to skip, they will lock, they need a little bit of freedom. So they're, they're not as good or as strong as ratchet and pawls but they are quite simple and they are quite elegant. There are just different places that you use these things for different reasons and what amuses me more than anything really is how you see these mechanisms all over the place time and time again and we're using something that was made for a seatbelt. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.